long friend Rafael Isidoro. Isidori, sorry. Shout out. <laughs> Who has been speaking and discussing diversely, diversity in several forums. Original from Luxembourg, Carol Linger, also a long friend who is known in the WordPress community for advocating for mar more diverse representation on WordCamps. Um, from Colombia, now living in Lisbon, and the newcomer, say welcome, to the Portuguese WordPress community, Jamila Abuabara is a digital marketing professional with a large experience in public speaking. So the public is invited to join the conversation when invited by Rafael, of course. <laughs> Rafael, Carol, and Jamil, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Obrigada. So it's a pleasure to be here, and it's a pleasure to welcome Jamil at her first work camp. So big round of applause. And Carol, who has also I, I think more experienced than me in work camps, but uh, I have a little. Um, so the way we decided to run this to make it interesting and not boring and not a lecture is that I'm going to first tell you a little bit how I got to be here uh, in, well, a few years, except three were kind of like canceled by other things. And then we're going to get some tips from Carol on how uh, a community, but even businesses can work to you know, improve the, on their diversity and the advantages. And then also we're gonna hear Jamil's story, but also, and she's gonna talk about it later in her talk, how speaking, even at small events, whether our meetups or work camps or small you know, local events can really help um, on from a personal brand perspective, but also from a personal perception of ourselves perspective. And to, s to explain what I mean, I'm gonna start telling you how I arrived to the WordPress community in 2016, taken by a friend. And I started contributing through the polyglots because I'm a designer and there was not a lot of design related activities at the time. And so I started in 2016, I started, you know, translating in Italian and, and then I started helping with organizing some work camps. And at the end of 2017, my friends from Rome were organizing Work Camp Roma. And so I said, okay, I'm going to try sending you a talk, but please don't accept it just because you're my friends which of course it's kind of like, you know, safe netting myself. So anyway, my talk was chosen and my talk was about branding. So part of my imposter was talking, but also part was my own bias about the fact that who's gonna care about design or branding at a, you know, software development, coding, um, event, technical event. Well, as I found out, a lot of people did. So I gave my talk and people were like, oh, we loved your talk. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you, you mean it? So I said, you know what? Next year, I'm going to apply to every work camp where A, I have friends, so I go to see them, or I've never been, so I have an opportunity to go visit. And in 2018, I don't remember the number, but I spoke at either 18 or 20 events because my talks were light. <laughs> and so I had my talk about branding and then I wrote another talk about design principles. And then I did a talk about mindfulness. So there were all topics that if I had self-limited myself, I would have said, who's gonna care? But in reality, people cared. And people were happy that I shared my thoughts. And I had an opportunity to make friends and widen my audience. And though it wasn't business related, it certainly helped me get better with my self-esteem shut the imposter up, 
and sort of build a better posture, be better public posture for myself. And also, you know, divulgate and, and evangelize about design, which is obviously my core topic. And this is, m my story is just to give you a frame to look at what we're talking about and to sort of inspire you in daring and do not think for other people. Do not think, oh, but no one's gonna care about it. Let other people tell you we don't care about it, which most often they're not gonna tell you. To you. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm, I'm so happy you had the opportunity to become a speaker at WordCamp Roma because that made us become friends because yes. in 2018, like you said, we bumped into each other so many times and it's so great after the whole terrible three years of the pandemic that we are yes. united again on stage here at beautiful uh, WordCamp Lisboa. So what I would like to do is, uh, I would like to share a little bit of my experience um, as traveling the world with WordCamps and also having been an organizer for WordCamps in different countries. And I'm considering myself as an advocate for positive mental health in tech, but also for diversity and inclusion. And uh, I, I want to start with actually giving a shout out to the WordCamp Lisbon team, because what diversity and inclusion starts with, in my opinion, is awareness. And I love how the team was uh, trying to make an effort to get a more, yeah, to get more representation on stage and then noticing, okay, we didn't manage to get where we want to be. And then like, hmm, that, we, d we don't want that. So they were reaching out actively to more underrepresented minorities uh, in our community to get on stage to share the knowledge, which is great. And then they were still not satisfied with the result, which is another, uh, uh, another important uh, um, awareness, uh, uh, realization, whatever, language barrier. That's also something we have to talk about at yes. some point. And uh, then they, they were asking for help. They were like, hey, where are people that have more experience than we, than we have? And what are people that are experiencing maybe bias or uh, barriers to share their knowledge? And how can they help us with their experiences in, in, in organizing an even more diverse WordCamp Lisboa or WordCamp Porto next year? So um, I love what they were doing here. And um, that's, the, that's already the first advice I can give you. Like, it starts with awareness. And it starts with acknowledging that there is an issue and it is totally fine to reach out for help because we are facing all these challenges when it comes to representation, diversity and inclusion and nobody has the global solution for it. And that is another important advice. Diversity is multifaceted. Like diversity looks different in Portugal uh, then it looks in the Netherlands, then it looks in the UK, then it looks in the US, then it looks in, Af in Africa or in Asia. So instead of just trying to projecting our own realities to other areas in the world, how cool would it be if we would just stay all open-minded, curious uh, about other uh, people's realities and learn from each other instead of bashing each other, right? Yep. So that's, yeah, that's the other important advice that I'd like to give. Stay open-minded and consider that diversity is multifaceted. And, uh, yeah. yeah it, it's also a resource. You yeah. know, that diversity is it's really enriching and it's something that can... Uh, it brings value from so many points, mm -hmm. you know, because someone that is not like us has a different perspective, has a different point of view. Uh, they can tell about us something that we cannot see. So even it's like accepting criticism in a way, you know, if we can go past the unease when someone tells us something that we kind of go, huh, you know, no, you know, I don't do that. Uh, and if we kind of make ourselves go past that and say, well, you know, maybe I do. Maybe I don't see it. That's the awareness, you know, mm -hmm. that, that Carol is, is telling about. We, there's a huge opportunity in that 
place where, oh, let me look at me or at my project or at my company or at my event from that perspective. That's, that can only bring value and it can never be damaging mm. in any way. Now, also when it comes to, uh, to bias, I do think that, uh, yeah, we are all in this room and outside this room in our community dealing with unconscious bias. Okay. And it would be so valuable to have these proactive conversations and open proactive conversations happening about, hey, Rafaela, what did you encounter when you were organizing or speaking at WordCamps? Like maybe bias that you've been noticing as somebody else pointed out to you and you were like, oh wait, yeah, I, I have prejudices in my mind and I wanna be that person who evolves and work on them. And if organizers start having these uh, conversations within their team, they will be able to identify and help each other uh, to find out about those biases and working on them and removing them little by little. So diversity starts on the inside and having not only a diverse team that represents the people in our community as a part of the organizing team, but also having these open, proactive conversations about unconscious bias and how to remove that from maybe the speaker selection. Um, yeah, that would be that would really that would be really awesome. And, and I do feel that we're sometimes scared to have these conversations. We are not, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> we as, we in the as community. a general team. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's amazing uh, that you have your experience, uh, Carol and um, Rafaela. Uh, we have different background. We are not technical, but we are here. And I think that all is about communication. Uh, every person has uh, one experience. Then this experience that we have can help to other person and uh, we have to express. Um, I am from Colombia, my English is improved and always I did, but I try to express myself all the time that I come. I am learning English and Portuguese in the same time. Wow. You're a hero. And I am here to talk and express myself because I know that a lot of people have a scare or a fear to expose. And I think you have to uh, face this fear that you have and make and encourage and express yourself and explain what is your experience. And I think that it's important because if you don't explain yourself, uh, nobody knows you. Nobody knows what do you know, what do you do, what uh, is your background, uh, what can you um, apport to the society. And it's different about the diversity you have. Uh, here we are a different country. Lisbon is multicultural people. So you have learned to different experience, to different culture, and you in, in, in Russia, you have more about, uh, about the war and you have more knowledge. So I think that it's important to express and speak in public um, if, if in Spanish I can uh, speak better because I can find uh, more words and I can uh, talk more, but I am here to express myself. And that's it, you have to express to be, you have a value, everybody have a value that identify, you have abilities, skills, and you have a lot of things to, to express to the society to grow up. Think one thing that diver diversity is like a, not a it's not a cake that you know it's not a cake left for you um, it's a game in which everybody wins everybody yeah. it multiplies you know and it's an excellent point the fact that um, if you don't make yourself visible then Hello. <laughs> it's okay. Um, if you, ha I lost my th I, my thought, but um, yeah, whatever. It's it's something that uh, multiplies and synergizes. 
Uh, and if you're, oh, that's what I was going to say. If you are not visible, you are not seen, which is like obvious, but it's not so obvious mm -hmm. if you reflect on it. And so that's one part, and it's about each one of us. But the other important thing is how much representation matters. Mm -hmm. If I see someone like me doing something, it even irrationally tells my brain that I could be that person too. So this is especially important for young people to see that, uh, or for whatever age people to see that and say, hey, I can do that. Hey, maybe just like I did, you know, I thought, ooh, who's going to care about branding at a work camp? Mm. And guess what? They do. Uh, and, you know, anything that we can give to the community, there's going to be, even if there's only one person that you touch, that's one pl person more than zero. And you may maybe not change their life, but maybe you can improve their life, mm -hmm. or you can give them ideas, or you can give them the courage that maybe they were lacking. What, what, what I would also like to see more is, so we have so many um, experienced speakers already in our community, and I'm not t only talking about WordCamps, I'm also talking about meetups and, and other tech conferences. And how cool would that be if um, the people that know that they, 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 that they are really good at sharing their knowledge, that they would just become mentors for other people from underrepresented communities. How cool would that be if you plan your next talk, you would just think about, hey, I know this person who is also pretty, pretty great in design or in community work or in development, and let's give a talk, let's give a talk together. Let's pitch them in, in or let's uh, create a workshop together. And uh, so that can come from each and every single one of us that is already sharing their knowledge actively with the community. But of course, WordCamps can facilitate that. They can find experienced community members in their own community to share with others how to become more confident going on stage, how to write a pitch, how to uh, set up a slide deck. Um, there's so many things we can share. Um, with other people to encourage and to empower them to become visible because like just like Rafaela said representation matters so so much and uh, Yeah mentorship programs and there is initiatives also like in from the global WordPress community There is a diverse uh, speaker training program which is led by Jill binder and there's the hashtag WP diversity where you can check out all these th all these things and I'm gonna share that in the Twitter thread after after our panel here and um, yeah, and there's companies supporting uh, people traveling uh, around the world and traveling to WordCamps within their country to share their knowledge if they identify as being part of underrepresented uh, minorities within our community. So as, as you can see, I work with Yoast. We have the Yoast Diversity Fund. Um, so as soon as they are my sponsors. <laughs> so as soon as you uh, uh, manage to be accepted um, at a WordCamp, wherever it's going to happen in the world, you can reach out uh, to get uh, uh, helps in terms of funding your travels and accommodation to actually get on stage, because not everybody is privileged enough to work for companies that are just going to sponsor our travels or contributions to the open source project, right? And that's part of diversity conversations as well. One thing that I want to um, apport is if you want to talk and you are nervous, the first time that I was speaking, I didn't prepare it about uh, mentality. So I will go and I will stand in the public and I will talk about my project. Was in one a company that was inversor, um, is 14 persons around. When I was at stand of them, I was so nervous. It was my first time. And my, my heel, my high heel, stuck in the floor. I can't talk. My, the microphone went like this, and my voice go. So in this, when I finished this, uh, this uh, expo exposition, mm -hmm. I say, okay, I, I like to express myself. I like to communicate whenever in what in language that I can, but I want to communicate. So 
I make some uh, program like PN, PNL. I don't know how uh, PNL, and I try to improve how to uh, take out this fear that I have and express myself because I know that I can help other women and other person empower them to speak in public. Nobody knows about that, but they have to empower and they have to express and give to the community and the society all the best that they have. So this is the only you gotta push it a little. So you wanna are there any questions? Because so we're I'm running gonna, out of time. I'm gonna need to do a talk show because I need to okay. move around because that's the okay. last microphone. Are we gonna like so talk like anyone that now? wants to chip in with this. any question? Hello. Uh, I have a quite personal question, so it's okay if you don't want to answer. Um, do you have or do you want to share, all of you, a moment in your life or in your public speaking career? where you realize like, hmm, being a woman or being part of a minority is actually powerful, is actually an advantage for me that I want to talk about it. Do you have like a story around a moment of mind blow where like, hmm, being a woman is powerful? Well, <laughs> I kind of tell that myself every morning, but you know, <laughs> I'm sort of training myself to that. Um, Woo! Yeah. Well, it, it took me more than 50 years to get, get there, there, so, you know, I'm happy that you, you can kind of get there sooner. Mm -hmm. um, quickly, uh, no, if I understand your question, I never had the feeling that I was uh, uh, particul particularly fortunate by being a woman in um, you know, it's like, oh, what a privilege, I'm, you know. Uh, in fact, I would say I've often experienced the contrary. Uh, on the other hand, I remember the end of my first talk in Rome and the reaction from the people, and I remember that moment as being very empowering. And I remember people coming up and say, oh, wow, what a great talk, and that was, and I just felt like, oh, I have value, I have things to say, and these people are happy that I've told them. So that was mine. I don't know if you've had experiences. I, I think this is a really... We want people to join, so really... Okay. Oh, sorry, yeah. Okay. No, no, go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. Um, okay, uh, so I, I've been speaking for a while, and I, I've seen also, as a developer, uh, I've seen a positive discrimination and actually going to the other way. And I don't like it, so I, I'm interested in your opinion about that. Y you're meaning that um, to create more diversity uh, on stage or on panels or in general, yeah, that, yeah. that women would like have an advantage because they would be like chosen because of their yes. gender to... Yes. Yeah. I, it, is, it is a very, very good question. And uh, to be very honest, I was more on, on... So I was sharing your view on things like two or three, we two, two or three years ago where I was worried if I would apply to become a speaker somewhere, for example, if they would accept me because of my gender, because not of the quality that I would deliver, but to have more uh, um, diversity on stage. Right? You, you would be part of the diversity quota, so that's what you mean, right? So I do think that that is part of the imposter syndrome, to be very honest, which is and I'm not saying men don't have it, men, do, men have that too, but I see it's so much more common within my female friends in, in this community. And I just stopped myself, and I didn't allow myself to think that anymore, because I know I have quality to deliver, and I know that I'm good at what I'm doing, so I won't let anybody either discriminate me because of my gender, or keep telling myself, if that is not happening, it is only because I am a woman, so I don't think that women deliver less quality, and I know that's not what you've been saying here, especially because you are brilliant at what you were doing as well, and everybody knows that. 
So I do think that women deliver the same amount of quality as, as, as men can deliver, but often are already struggling with imposter syndrome when they are starting to write a pitch for a talk because they think, am I the expert in this? Yes, you are if you can teach others what you're doing. You are the expert in the room. And there's always going to be people who know a little bit more, but there's also going to be people who are so thankful for everybody sharing their knowledge on stage, especially free at work camps. I hope this answers your question a little bit. So we are running late, but we will take one more participation. Anyone? No other questions. I guess that's it. Okay. So uh, thank you for helping us with this. Oh, oh, it was really inspiring. Question. There. <laughs> it changed his mind. <laughs> So it's, it's not exactly a question. I want to thank first Ra Rafaela because in 2019 she also uh, made a great effort so that we ca could uh, uh, be more aware ab about this, uh, this issue. And uh, I want to thank you, the three of you, uh, to help us uh, to be more aware and have some uh, I think we are, uh, we, we, in the organizing team, we are real, really aware about, about this issue. And we are, uh, the greatest uh, problem we have is that uh, we need uh, actions. So we, we need to know how to do it. So we are aware that we have uh, like uh, uh, a few, few women, uh, uh, um, saying yes when we when we do the the call for speakers and and we have uh, a lot of uh, we have a, a few a few uh, minority rem representatives in our in our community and so uh, what we need is is to um, see how we can act on it and we have we it, it's 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 been really hard for us uh, and i want to thank you for helping us to be more aware and be more active in trying to, to correct it. So thank you. I'm going to share a document with you. So I'm going to put it into a Twitter thread, like right after uh, this panel. It's already prepared. And I'm going to share the document with you. So this is like my personal view on how to improve things. But also, there's lots of resources um, where you can actually uh, go and have conversations with other people and uh, find out about how they've been improving their situation. Thank you, thank and, you. And I also think that what you're doing as a community is brilliant. Like Carol said, just reach out and, and ask, and you know, and just that's, that's really the core of, of it. You yeah, know? thanks like for doing seeing that. Seeing something and say, hmm, uh, I can pretend it's not a problem, or I can see it's a problem, and try and fix it. There's no magic fix, but it, it's, it's a path, you know, it's, it's a progress that and As an organizer, I think and I hope we are improving on that. You are. You, Thank you, you really everyone. are. Thank, Thank you. you.